you can increase the dynamic range on any camera out there. Dynamic range is how far your camera can stretch into the shadows and also into the highlights, the dark areas and the bright areas. To be able to see the detail in the shadows while also not blowing out the brighter areas. A great example of why this matters is um, we've all taken pictures indoors with a bright window somewhere in the room. And one of two things usually happens. You're either going to end up with those windows being completely blown out, not being able to see any detail outside of the glass because it's just so bright. And the difference from the light indoors versus outdoors is, is there's a ton of contrast there. Or the opposite's going to happen where you're going to be able to see everything outside that window crystal clear, but everything inside is going to look dark, shadowed and little to no detail. So what do you do to solve that? And that's where the importance of dynamic range comes in. The better your camera is, the better the dynamic range is going to be. The preferred way to do it is to actually do a bracketed shot with your camera. What a bracketed shot is, is a feature of your camera. You're gonna turn this feature on in whatever camera you're using, and it's gonna allow you to take three, five, seven, even sometimes nine images. You could actually do this in aperture priority mode or full manual. What you're ultimately gonna do is you're gonna find your perfect exposure or the exposure that you want for the scene, and that's your neutral exposure. The camera will take one shot, and then after that, it's gonna shoot a sequence of shots. In my case, is it actually takes uh, seven shots total, one neutral, three underexposed, and three overexposed. When I take these photos, they're actually in raw format, so then I later put them in Lightroom and then merge them together myself. And so, um, or, or I should say I allow Lightroom to merge the files versus my camera. And Lightroom does a great job of doing this. You can also do it completely manual in Photoshop as well. But ultimately what you're doing here is you're taking multiple exposures of the same exact scene. And so what you're gonna need for this is you're gonna need a steady, sturdy tripod or a way to hold your camera in the same spot so that every single image is as close to the first one as possible. I'm not talking about exposure, I mean position and composition. Like you can't, the more you move, in between shots, the less likely you're gonna be able to combine them later. So it's really vital to you to have some kind of tripod or some method of being able to just set your camera and, and fire it off. Also, you're gonna wanna use the timer setting on your camera with a minimum of a two second timer so that you can hit the exposure button, let your camera stop moving, fire off a sequence of photos at various exposures so you can later create your own HDR image. This also works for drones too, like with DJI, this setting isn't shooting brackets, it's actually AEB, so maybe your camera has it listed as AEB um, as a feature, and you wanna try to use the most shots you can. They usually, they're gonna come with a minimum of three, um, but my Nikon goes all the way up to nine. And what I end up with is, I already have a great camera with great dynamic range, but I'm able to actually take it and stretch it even further and it really makes your photos pop. It really creates a unique look to them. And in my opinion, it's actually looking a little bit more natural with compared to the human eye. Um, and not to mention, it gives you a lot more creative freedom as well as you have a lot more details in the shadows than you normally would and you're able to pull a lot more out of those highlights than you could had you not used um, some kind of high dynamic range method. Um, so some cameras have like an HDR mode where it'll automatically process the photo for you and create it in your camera. I know with my D7500, uh, it will do it only in JPEG. So I don't like using that. I, I actually think that if you have to switch it out of RAW to JPEG to get a um, HDR photo, you're better off just leaving it in RAW in the first place. And to be honest, I rarely use any automatic HDR method at all. I prefer to just take the bracketed shots because ultimately when you get home, you have more options and more options are good. Sometimes your automatic HDR might even keep a RAW copy too. And when enabling that, at least you might save some time every time you nail one of those automatic shots. But for me, I just, have a good workflow that I like to work with and that includes shooting seven shot brackets and then later merging them together in Lightroom. There's a couple different ways to skin the cat. 
none are wrong it's just that some have more benefits than others and your situation may differ from mine all right so if you're using a device that literally gives you no control at all you have to literally just take a picture and it's going to choose the settings for you um, you can still actually stretch the dynamic range with that too and the way you're going to do it is if your camera has a touch screen on it sometimes you can just tap and focus on a certain area and then it's going to automatically adjust the brightness on it so one method you could do is if you have no control over the settings is maybe if there's a bright window push the focus point to the window so that the exposure will be more based on the light near the window uh, than anywhere else in the room take a picture then take another one that's in one of the darker areas inside the room and, and focus on that and just make sure you don't move that camera and you can use that as a way to trick your camera into taking a darker or lighter picture so last is probably the easiest way to do this and that's going to be if you have no control at all and you're unable to trick your camera or um, you really can't even choose where the exposure is based on your camera you just have to point and click you're still not out of luck so what you can do is you get home with that photo preferably a raw photo but I'm thinking that if you can't adjust your exposure you're probably not going to be able to shoot raw either so in that case you're going to take your photo you're going to load it into any photo processing software and create two duplicates the first duplicate you're going to raise the brightness the second one you're going to darken once you've got these three shots then you have to merge them the way i merge my files is with adobe lightroom you may even want more control over your images and so you could actually also do it in photoshop and manually blend the photos together but for me lightroom does a great job of creating an HDR image from your exposures that that's what I use with about 90% of the photos I process is in Lightroom. Now I recognize not everybody's going to have a photography business and having Lightroom may not work for you. So in that case, I'm going to do a little bit of research as soon as I'm done recording this and I'm going to look for a few different sources that are free or at least affordable at merging your files for you. All right, that's all I have for you today. It's really simple and definitely the most affordable way for you to increase the dynamic range on any device. I'd highly recommend that you start using this right away, especially in your architecture, real estate, and even landscape photography. My name is Justin Bradley. I'm a full-time freelance photographer from California. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Make sure you hit that like button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future tutorials. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.